Welcome back to another episode of Drinking and Thinking. Today we're enjoying a hot buttered rum mm. and then talking about uh, the crazy pace of life that we live. So grab something hot, stick around, and let's dive on in. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Johnny, welcome back for the. F- I thought you guys don't touch. I know these mugs. Seem you, bitter, you, We're too doing? far. We're too uh, far. Okay. okay. Right. Yep. We splash otherwise. Hot buttered rum. Hot buttered rum. Um, Johnny, first of all, welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, heck remember, yeah. remember on the <laughs> <laughs> remember uh, on the last episode we said you were like we thought you were the yeah the like highest. Now I must definitely be. Now you are. Now you are. So you're right up there with Kevin for how many times he's shown up. Yeah. yeah, I feel like Kevin's on here all the time. Well, he's physically here. <laughs> Is he checked in and tuned in? That's a uh, that's another story. Oh boy! Right. So, uh, yeah, it's great to have you back. Uh, you know the drill because you are a frequent. I'm a listener. I've been on the second season. I know how you guys run things now. Yep. Mm. Do so. you want to explain it to all of our listeners and watchers ooh, how this ooh. works? I'll give you that honor. While I enjoy I this. can attempt. I've also yeah, never can... gotten the honor, so this is great. <laughs> I've also never been on Soda Nerds. <laughs> oh, yeah. Still. <laughs> oh, still, you should go still watch last episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, well, I'll do my best. Uh, this show is drinking and thinking, and every week these guys try a new drink, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic versions of them. And today this is the buttered rum. Hot buttered rum. Hot Buttered it's rum. important that you specify. Yeah, you guys say hot. hot. I love that the last time you had me on here, you did a hot drink as well. Also, yeah. Well, it's winter. It's hot season. <laughs> it's hot <laughs> season. It's, it's the middle of July. It's hot in here. It's a great July 4th drink. So, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, could you imagine literally drinking this like a hot summer night? <laughs> that would be yeah. disgusting. That'd be terrible. In your house with no AC and it's 90 degrees out and humid. Why don't you not have AC? <laughs> no, that makes you want to have another sip Just for sure. Just sweating life away. So anyway, <laughs> these guys try a new drink mm-hmm. every single episode. And uh, for your viewing pleasure and also if you want to get into the world of fine mixed cocktails and drinks. And whether you drink alcohol or not. You can have these drinks on this show because, yep. again, like I said, they do the alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and every week they're rated yep. and put and up we on the put board. Put them on the board. Rated from a scale of zero to ten. I feel Fantastic. like I don't have a place on this show anymore. So Perfect. you guys continue. See you later. So you finally realized that. <laughs> uh, this is, this that is was, all it took. <laughs> this is fantastic. Great intro for this. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, the, uh, the, the question the we questions. always have to ask: Have you ever had? A um, sorry, a hot buttered rum. I have not. Have you ever heard of a hot Question buttered rum? Too? <sighs> no, I have not. Ooh. Oh, we're gonna call you Kevin this episode. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Kevin. It's good to have you. Good to have you. You ever yes. walked by a fridge and want to jump I in? Lit- <laughs> I was literally just about to ask if you guys have a fridge I could have walk you ever into. Signed up for something in a feminine sort of way. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> true. Sorry. If you don't get those jokes, that means you've not been listening or watching. Just go back yeah. and watch yep. again. We got yep. a great season this time mm-hmm. around. So, well, Hot welcome, Johnny. Rum. Hey, <laughs> please, please don't do that. Again. You're, you're Johnny. <laughs> That's my favorite thing Kevin's ever done. I'm Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, what caused him to do? There was like a pause. Like, what was that? <laughs> like, it's so weird. I have heard. I don't think Kevin watched one episode from no. season one. No. Just based on what he talked about. But he's come back to me several times this season and said, Hey, I watched this episode with his wife. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm wow. excited to hear when this, oh, one this comes, one? like if he watches <laughs> this Kevin, this is just for you. So <laughs> oh. I hope he watches this and he doesn't I, just like randomly pick and choose. And, I hope he watches this one specifically. This is great. Yeah. All right. So Johnny, you get the honors of starting off our rating from zero to ten. What? I don't like that because I feel like I rated the last time I was on here. No, you always start yeah. in this chair. This you always just... start in this chair. Yeah. Well, we either always start in this chair or wherever Kevin is. <laughs> so it's I mean, basically he's not here right either now. way. Chris and I ain't going first. Right. So, yeah. Chris is always second, and I'm always last. So 
Uh, okay, so you rate on a scale of 0 to 10, 5 being an average, correct? Yep. That's how this is done. Do you remember your score for the last drink, the what was hot, the last toddy? Drink? It hot was, toddy? It was low. It was bad. I want to say low. it was like a three-something. Yeah. Did you even finish that drink? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so mm. either. So Just tasted like... Okay. There's only been one drink we have not finished. No, two. Well, two for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'll that tell you right now. I didn't finish the Guinness, and I didn't finish that pear one. Yeah, yeah. yeah those are I bad. am finishing this one. Okay. Ooh. 100%. Although I will say, if you are going to have this drink of hot buttered rum, it's got to be during the winter. I don't see how you would ever have this drink. You wouldn't just have this just, summer just months. sitting on have a lake on a season. floaty. <laughs> yeah. Hot season. Sitting yeah. on a floaty. <laughs> Just, just, you know, tubing behind a pontoon or something, yeah. just drinking a Absolute, hot buttered rum. Absolutely not. So we're obviously in a, in a cooler climate. I drink this, and I think of, like, the holiday season. Mm -hmm. yep. That's kind of what this makes me think of. Um, I'm going to give this a solid... I'm going to give it a 7.7. .7. Wow. Okay, now I know you have not been here for Dog. all but one of the other episodes, but you rate this as a number two cocktail in your seven based point, on yeah, this. Yeah, 7.7. .7. Yeah, there you go. And I've never had an espresso martini, but I have had a piece of crap gin and tonic. Wrong kind of gin. So, All right, we're going to put Johnny on the 15-minute uh, silent. <laughs> You lost your speaking privileges for the next 15 minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll unmute geez, you there. very, very that, uh, sympathetic did you, to Did you tonics. hear when I talked about this? I said this is my desert island drink. Yeah. I, you said it more than once. I know. And you... How could you disrespect it, me like that? And you called back to it on yes. future episodes. I know. Also, real quick. I love this drink. <laughs> I know I have very little control behind the scenes in this podcast. Yeah. However, I feel like I've earned and a little And by very little mean absolutely Zero. zero. <laughs> I show okay. up. Um, I feel like I've deserved uh, deserved enough respect to have my desert island cocktail at some point. Oh, is Scotch your on ice? <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, but it hasn't come up yet. So. Yeah, I, know. I guess my question is: if an old fashioned and a gin and tonic have the exact same rating, why does the gin and tonic get to sit on top? I'll, I'll tell you why. I have you know very the little waiting. <laughs> They're the same the exact thing. Listen, you. Think, think about this. You know why you know the this answer. one's ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you know the answer. Because I'm the one who writes these and puts them on. Okay, that's yeah. why. Kevin and I have zero control. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're lucky I even also, do the math correctly. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Kevin so, and I also have like six other podcasts together. We can't oh my figure, goodness. We can't figure out how to record them or post them. <laughs> they're not uploaded but, anywhere. But they're great. Oh, that's good. A <laughs> lot of inside jokes. When eventually somebody in the world hears them, they'll love them. Yeah, yes, when exactly. they walk by two guys just sitting on a bench talking. Yeah. So yeah. Kevin and I are too similar in some ways. It makes me a little frustrated. We have the yeah. same birthday. We have similar oh. views on a lot of things. <laughs> and both neither one of you know how to use modern technology. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're only like 80 years difference, and that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're the same person. Otherwise, it's the same, and it makes me sad to see where I'm going. Uh, <laughs> just I kidding, really Kevin. hope Kevin just watches kidding. this episode. Um, all okay, right, what turn. are you going to rate this cocktail? All right, so uh, as His, you, go ahead. Hold on, I just want to specify. You can't influence. No, no I'm going to no, ask no. a question because yeah. of something I just said, and it triggered a word in my head. He doesn't influence me. Is this a cocktail? I am um, no. Actually, that's interesting. You said that because if I were. If I were pressed, I would say this is not a cocktail. He's more like a coffee treat. What is this it? Though? Actually, I don't know what else it would be. What do you call a drink with booze in it? That's. I guess it's a cocktail. But yeah. when is, what it's if a it's mixed. NA? Drink. Maybe the maybe the NA version. You well, no could, NA version could technically, technically call it a cocktail. Yeah. I haven't had a single cocktail <laughs> all season long. <laughs> the. Um, this drink does remind me of something my wife would get at Caribou or Starbucks every morning. We've also talked about that yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Remember when I brought that little thing of creamer to yeah, add yeah. in? It's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, so this this uh, cocktail, if that's what we want to call it, the yep. hot buttered rum. Hot buttered rum. It's good, man. Uh, when it comes to cocktail, as a drink, it's a great drink. I would drink this in the morning. Well, the NA version, of course. <laughs> I'm going to work. Uh, I would drink... <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> That's just what's going to go out to the public. But all right. Uh, Continue on. I, uh, I would drink. The, it's very good drink. Very flavorful. Very sugar heavy. Um, <laughs> Extremely. In terms of a cocktail, though, I would put it fairly low. Mm. I. Some of you, you know, you're a listener. Hopefully, you guys are listeners. Um, well, I, they are if they made it this far. Maybe they're watchers. But put it on mute. Oh. Yeah, if somebody's uh, listening this at this specific <laughs> second, they're definitely a listener of the show. Good point. Uh, okay. Guys, the point is taken, okay? <laughs> um, Say things better, Dan. <laughs> I like spirit heavy uh, yeah. cocktails typically. And this is not So there's bad. enough not, there's not no. enough scotch or whiskey Correct. in this for it's, you to like it. I can't see through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not transparent. <laughs> I like a transparent cocktail. Uh, I want to know what's going on. Um, yeah, to me, this is a solid cocktail, but it's not amazing. Maybe a five. I'd put it right on as an average. Good. At least it hit average because there's a no planet is this below average. I just typed in something <laughs> wrong. Did you and say no planet? This is below. It. Did you? You said 7.7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. So I typed something wrong. Okay. 7.7 7 plus five. I Easy. am loving this leaderboard because now there's enough up here that I'm starting to rate these based, based on of, other ooh. drinks. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. And so when I okay. look, there's a problem with doing that, but go ahead. Do you want to say it before yes, I get my I score then? The problem is this is the average of three individuals. So if you're rating That's it based true. off of what yeah. you're seeing here as an average, you're just going to continue to skew the results over time. By the way, your hat elite. <laughs> all right so what do i really think about this cocktail i definitely tend to like sweeter drinks mm -hmm. so this is in favor of that maybe maybe like an arctic island cocktail definitely not a desert island <laughs> great point it's, not a des <laughs> it's a great point an arctic island that's Ke true by the way while you're thinking about this kevin would love this cocktail I'm he kind of would. Upset he probably would. Here. I feel like we might have to remake this we one. Should. Is this uh, just on the is, side? Is this close to your espresso martini? No, it's not at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Kevin loves ice cream. He also loves sweets. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and he likes coffee, tooth, which is yeah. not, and you know what? He likes his ice cream melted. This is basically what he has every night. <laughs> That's a good so, point. This, he knows he can't chew it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think <laughs> <laughs> that's what you have to look forward to. By the way, so. <laughs> Uh, I think I gave the hot toddy a five. I would definitely prefer this over a hot toddy. Mm -hmm. Duh. So. <laughs> Duh. You have taste buds, don't you? So I'm going to give uh, this one a six. Okay. okay. I still Above I still average. remember enough of the board to know if I go much higher than that. I'm getting into some yeah, yeah, yeah. good no, areas. Now that he is revealed Shoot. that that's the way he does it, nothing will ever beat a gin and tonic. No, definitely. No, no. It'll I, live there forever. Though yeah, the espresso did. Right. The espresso was a great cocktail. The espresso averaged out better than a gin tonic. Didn't you skew that? If I can remember, you gave that like a nine. You, I have you to go had back a and high look. rating on that. The espresso martini was so stinking it, it good. It was so good. You okay. should do that again. <laughs> so. You should make one right now. The hot <laughs> butter. <laughs> <laughs> 6.23. I have nothing going on Six for the next 45 minutes. Three. Okay. So where does that end up? Above average. It's <laughs> above average at best. It's definitely above average. Oh, dog. 6.23. That's so low. That's really low. Okay, that's so that's sad. above a Palm de V, but below a Bloody Mary. Wait, oh. can I, wait, can I change mine? I feel like I screwed up then because hey, I would much rather have this than a Bloody. But this is the average, too. Hey, in light of. Oh, and you in, skewed it down. Yeah. In light I didn't of skew it uh, down. basing. Just, it was down. Yes, you did. In light of basing off of uh, the drinks on here, I didn't know that was allowed. It's not so, allowed. So can I change that <laughs> no, mine now allowed. for this drink? I'm going to give it a 12. <laughs> it's not allowed. Shoot. We're going to have to re-rate everything. We're going to have to redo everything because... Stop this. You're going to be fine. Stop this. Johnny and I are going to have a Cut problem. Cut this part out of your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't mention it. Just move on. All right. I'm going to start by making the espresso. You and I are going to have to go to town here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Well, it's fine. You know what? What do you mean, shoot? This is what we've done all because season long. Because you didn't long. get the outcome that you wanted? Yeah. 
Don't you, you realize that's how I operate? You understand who you're life. talking to, right? I'm either pleased because I got what I wanted, or disappointed because I didn't. That's that's All right. Shaheen 101. Yeah. Mm. So man. All right. Well, well, six point two three is what it is. We're not changing it now. We've that, never gone back and changed the score. Nor no. should we? Why would we? You it's wouldn't. an average. Yeah, I don't. You look just at this just disaster of a scoreboard that's going on. We have a lot that are right above average. I feel like I I'm, told you it's the wild card. No, this race. is perfect, guys. This is the midpoint of the scale. We should have a lot right on the front end, right on the back end, just above, just above average, and just below, just below average. We do, we have. Had though a ton of crappy drinks. They've though. been terrible. Okay, <laughs> they've been below average. Straight trash. Homie. We've been nice about them. Um, yeah. The screwdriver, okay. by the way, that was <laughs> that was just orange juice. Yes, <laughs> especially for me. Yeah. So and <laughs> yeah, it was orange juice. Was there a, <laughs> just orange juice? Was there in ice in there too, orange though? juice and vodka. No, I don't so even think that no, was Yeah, ice. his was just orange juice. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and then, it was just. It was orange juice with another clear liquid that has no benefits. <laughs> it was like watered down orange <laughs> juice. <laughs> you know, was, Kevin and I were like, Ugh, "This is fine." Okay, the NA stuff has some flavor. Don't don't knock but not, it completely. Not the, not, the vodka. not the vodka. The vodka has like a weird. If I remember correctly from last season, it's got like a weird like fake peppery taste whoa, whoa. to kind of get some of the burn of alcohol correct but in orange juice <laughs> it no. did nothing also like we we have yet to try like a straight uh martini or something like that with either gin That's or vodka true. i'm very curious because they're not good i'll no. just say that they're meant to be mixed together we've talked about this before all of our na spirits they Ooh. shouldn't be meant to be yeah like, like how do you know they're a, not how do you make a manhattan with i would love NA. to find out I love it. Yeah, you guys that. Liars, is that on the list this year? Uh, Are you serious? It might be. Liars Dark Cane Spirit works well in this. So. <laughs> oh, Manhattan. <laughs> Honestly, Martini, Manhattan, Old Fashioned, Scotch on the Rocks. Like, those are my four amigos. <laughs> That's what I'm rolling four? with. Four? Okay. Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> I meant, I think we were supposed to have three. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't narrow well, down to three. Hot buttered rum, 6.23. It's, it's above average, so we would recommend making this cocktail. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, yeah. I will also point out, we um, we do this every single podcast. Yep, this is the first one. We spent 20 minutes talking about a board. <laughs> I was just noticing that, too. Like, it's been 18 minutes. We've just Are you been serious? BSing oh about. Yeah, yeah. Well, sorry yes. to those of you listening to the podcast version of <laughs> no, this that there's... haven't even seen the board. <laughs> you might want to go over to YouTube. <laughs> you should watch. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. Watch yeah. the video. All Maybe right. we could start putting Let me in the list the board for you real quick. <laughs> I'm going to read it all. <laughs> oh. Espresso martini, gin and tonic, old fashioned love and <laughs> uh, Just know it's it's a one through ten. Nothing's a one. Nothing's a ten. There you it's go. It's all in the middle. We got like 20 drinks on there now. There's a drink close to those, but. Um, no, watching, listening, whatever. If you haven't subscribed yet, we would appreciate if you would do that at Let's Drink Think. Uh, you can send us an email. Hello at Let's Drink and Think dot com. If you want to send us any topics you want us to talk about, questions you have, recipes you want us to try, cocktails, any of that sort of stuff and um, whatever else the stuff you do is. So um, if you're new to the show, every single week we enjoy a cocktail or a hot beverage or whatever you want to call this one. And then we talk about just life topics from uh, all sorts of perspectives and kind of land on a Christian perspective, all being Christians mm -hmm. ourselves. This week, I thought we would talk about uh, just the crazy, hectic, busy, fast-paced lives that we are living. And I think this is true for just about everybody. Mm -hmm, for Single, sure. married, kids, no kids, young, old. It just seems like we are racing faster and faster all the time. And uh, it, it just seems like you, you ask anybody, how's life? The the stereotypical response you get is, I'm good, but it's busy. busy. It's just busy. Everybody yeah. is so busy all the time. And uh, I just thought we'd talk about how's that going for you? How's it working? Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Uh, eventually, we'll get around to what does God have to say about this or what's how does kind of faith play into this? Overpacked schedule, sort of thing, but the floor is open. So what I, um, you just mentioned the busy thing, and I've been trying to uh, intentionally, when people ask that question, 
I, I've been catching myself a couple times too by saying, nope, I'm not going to say busy. And sometimes I've even said it out loud, <laughs> which is very weird in a conversation. But I, I don't want to say like, oh, I'm busy because it's all uh, all of our reaction. And so I'm trying to get into this mindset of like, no, let's, let's talk about a little bit beyond the surface level of saying I'm busy or it's been busy. It's everything's so busy. Everything's so chaotic, so crazy. Uh, crazy. Um, but I, I just think that um, part of that is getting into the right mindset too because I think um, when you hear the term busy and we're all busy all the time too, sometimes it's okay to be like, ah, it's actually been pretty cool. Like everything's been like finally like chill lately. <laughs> like, and like that's where I want to strive to be. And uh, I think by continuing perpetuating saying busy, to me I've been trying to step away from that, even though it's still there, um, to try to get in the right mindset of just being like, no, everything's actually pretty good. Like we're in a good pace right now in life. Mm -hmm. um, but I think some of it's just what you say and what you continue to say over and over again. Johnny, uh, I know you're a, you're a guest on the show, but we've had some offline conversations. Yeah, for sure. This is a big this is kind of, I don't, I don't want to yeah. say issue. It's not a negative thing. This is a big thing you're kind of working through in your life this right now. This is a hot button topic. Yeah. In, and so yeah, you could say in my life. I, I think, uh, I'll at least speak for me, I, I don't care if you kind of want to dominate or if you kind of yeah. want to just lead us through what you've Perfect. been thinking and working through <laughs> for <laughs> for a while yeah um what y you've been on i'd say in the last month or two yeah i'd say the, the the last couple months a journey to really take this seriously just from the a thought of a hurried life and is like you asked is it yep. good is it bad what does God think of it? What should we do with yep. it? Right. Those these are all questions. So what kind of sparked this? Um I well, I guess if I mean if you want to look at the root of all of it, it's I have very young children. Uh like I have th uh three kids in the house, all six and under. So I have young kids. Mm -hmm. And um in light of kind of just the busy life, the hustle culture, the constantly go, 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 go. There's not only been things in my professional life that I've seen uh, that I've had to stop and think about. Is this the way we should be doing it as our personal unit family? And not only in, per in, in professional life, there's been things in, in personal life at home just the way when, you know, it's maybe yelling at each other to get up and we're running around, we're doing this, we got to here, go here, we got to go do that, we got to go do this. And when you kind of, I, I feel like over the past two months, there's, I've, I've kind of been that person where you can see sitting in a movie where they're watching all the hustle happen around them, but they're like, nobody knows they're there. They're just watching everything move and like, you know, mm -hmm. triple time. And, and I've, I've had to sit and think like, are we really doing things as our family the the way we should that's best for us right and and it comes down comes down to this whole idea of we all live hurried lives and uh i've kind of been on this quest you could say over the past couple of months to try and get rid of that slow things down a little bit um what would you say uh 3 months ago what would you say an average kind of weekly schedule looked like for you i mean i don't even know each hour but like yeah how many hours you say you were working what were like how i know a little bit about your story like how late in tonight were you working yeah. how much time were you spending with your family those sorts of things what was life like three months ago uh three months ago i so i have things that i do for work but also things that i just do recreationally <laughs> that take up a lot of my time where um I was working a lot of hours. I was doing uh, exponential recreational things that were eating into my time at home, time with my family. Um, there are some times where uh, I I wouldn't be home till midnight, maybe even one in the morning, and then gone again. At and your kids who are all six and under were obviously not still up. Yeah. So. Yep. So uh, that wasn't every day, right? Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't leaving at seven in the morning and coming home at 1 a.m. the following day every single day but enough to make me kind of sit back and go i don't know if this is the best you know and maybe there's some some things that that need to be cut and some things that need to be done differently and and kind of 
I don't know. I, I guess I've just been on this whole, it's like an I life alteration switch of, I have struggled a lot. I think a lot of my busyness for me personally, I've struggled a lot in my life with not wanting to disappoint people mm -hmm. uh, externally from my home. So I have a hard time saying no, right? And I, I, I think we can even reflect back to a conversation you and I had a few months ago where I express, I express this to you that I have a hard time saying no to people because I hate disappointing people. If you ask me for mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. I, I like saying no is hard for me. It's really good to know. Because I know... <laughs> It's really good to know. That's I can a great abuse. tidbit of information <laughs> to have in my back pocket. <laughs> because I, I have a I have a hard time saying no because I hate disappointing people, right? Yep. And you said to me, you said out of the things I was explaining to you that I, I was saying yes to, mm -hmm. you said, I don't think you have a hard time saying no. I think you have a hard time saying no to the right things. Yep. And that that might have been the shift, honestly. No. Like the that that might have been like the moment where I was like, <laughs> you know what? Like you are absolutely right. Where I I I feel throughout the course of my adult life, and I, I hate saying it, but it's true, it's just who I've been, is I will give everybody else all of me at the expense of my wife and my family. Like they seem to get the shaft because it, my mindset has been, well, I can't say no to external forces. You're the easier one because... But every time I say yes here... I'm saying no I'm to you. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yes. So it that that conversation, it may have been the shift where it was like, I might need to start to flip that a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Where you say there were pains or problems that were that you noticed prior to that? Or was that like a, oh my gosh, I never knew this before. Something's got to change. Um, I think there maybe was prior. And I've, I mean, I've gone through some medical things over the past few months too that have kind of helped, I think, shift me in, in a different direction here. So I don't, I, I think there were some things I, I was aware of prior. Um, but I think there's been a much greater mental shift recently where it's almost like I, I viewed home life as saying no to you now and the repercussions of it is not worth like me saying yes to everybody else, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it's flipped on its head, which yeah. is another thing you and I have talked about, which, which you've said to me, like, just be cautious to not, you know, if you've been living life one way, don't swing. Don't swing too far the opposite direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Find a way to do it in a in a healthy, gradual right. shift, which I've been trying to be mindful of. And because for me, it's always been, it's almost like a black and white. If I'm gonna say yes to you, I'm gonna say no to you. And now if I'm gonna start saying yes to you, I'm gonna say no to you. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know where the middle ground is. I don't know yeah. how to you know, it's mm -hmm. either black or white for me, and that's what I've had to battle with over the past uh, over the past few months. But ultimately, it has been um, <laughs> saying the phrase ruthlessly eliminating. Right, you brought this book up here. I did bring this book because I figured we talk about it. Yeah, at some you, point. you brought this bro book, uh, "The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry," uh, written by John Mark Comer. And you've read this book. I have read this book. Have you read the, the book? Past few months. I've read the book about two years ago. So the whole concept, yeah, you can bring we're that read up. it right now. Keep going. We're <laughs> gonna start at page one. Get ready. Sit back and relax. Actually, gonna, this is finally where I come in. I have a great voice. This for is reading. gonna be an audio book <laughs> or podcast. Uh, this is my personal copy. So while you keep talking, I'm just gonna look at some stuff we, because I love this book. We hope you enjoyed this audible production. <laughs> Brought to you by Beef Eaters. <laughs> Chapter one, why does my life suck? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Conclusion, because Shaheen's in it. I did read this book. Oh. Oh, that's a bummer. Go. This book was in, I mean, this is this has been another thing that I've done over the past few months is this book is coming to my life, uh, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And kind of the whole concept is exactly what the title is. We live in a very hurried lifestyle, like we said in the beginning here. 
oh, I'm doing good. We're just, you know, we're good. We're just busy, right? And this book kind of says, why? why? Like, how do we eliminate that from our lives? How do we get back to what actually matters instead of burning ourselves out with what doesn't? Could, this is not, maybe this whole episode is going to turn into just about this book. That's fine. Book. And well, yeah. yeah, I have a question on this, but go ahead. It's a great book. Um, I would just say this is this is a book written by a Christian with the goal of helping people grow in their relationship with God. So it's definitely got a very faith-based yeah. bent, but I think it's a good book for anybody to 100%. read. hundred percent. Even if you're not a Christian, right? Absolutely. You would agree? Absolutely. I would agree. I just I'm just flipping through looking for things I underlined. He said, hurry and love are incompatible. All my worst moments as a father, a husband, he's a pastor, and even as a human being happen when I'm in a hurry. He says, if you don't believe me, next time you're trying to get your wife and three mm. young, easily distracted children out of the house and you're running late, just pay attention to how you relate to them. Mm. Does it look and feel like love? Mm. He just No. He just and, and I remember no. I remember that specifically when I was reading this book because my wife and my three children when trying to hurry out the house in the morning <laughs> and amazing. I and after I'm and after I'm in the calm of my office, if I truly reflect back on how did this morning start? It started with everybody yelling at each other because we were running around and we needed to get here and we needed to do this and we you know what I mean? Where that that I remember that specifically when I read that because it hit so home with me because it was my wife and my three children mm -hmm. and the way that I acted and the way that I talked to them. Was it loving in the morning? You know, I could solve that. Just leave before they get up. But second question. That's <laughs> great point. <laughs> what I do every morning. Easily uh, fixed. Uh, I'll write a book. No, uh, <laughs> It's called Just Wake Up Earlier. Just Wake Up Earlier. You loser. <laughs> yeah. If you're not out the door by 530, you're doing it wrong. Uh, real question for you on this, though. So you, you talked about... Um, Doing things that are more beneficial, right? And saying yeah. no things. Are, how do you define what is more beneficial compared to what is not beneficial? Because some things may not be beneficial from the outside world, but may fill up your cup, if you will, like are beneficial to you from an emotional, give you energy, those types of things. But how do you define? Uh, how are you defining what what are things that are things you're going to keep on your plate, mm -hmm. and not things that you take off of because they're beneficial? So for me, it's kind of. The original elimination is easy because what I talked about before, there's professional and there's recreational, mm -hmm. right? So you, you want to balance, but at the same time, professional is important. I got to keep the roof over the kid's head yeah. and I got to feed them. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So the first thing to go is going to be recreational things. Right. Now, what I've been trying not to do is just put a hard ax through anything recreational because I don't think that's healthy. Sure. I don't think I'm going to cut every single thing from my life that I find anything joy in. Fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? I did that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but finding the balance with it, right? Mm. Like, for example... I was a little late getting here this we evening when, when we recorded we almost this episode. Didn't, we almost didn't well, record with you. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I wouldn't have had this wonderful drink that you guys dropped the average of, but that's fine. So, <laughs> example is I was a little late getting here tonight, and that's because recreational things have kind of set the rule over the past couple months. If I'm going to go do something recreational on a weeknight, I'm going to go do it after my kids are in bed mm. so I can read them books and I can put them to bed personally because mm. that's a time that I don't want to sacrifice for anything. Right. You know what I mean? Like as much as I enjoy sitting here with you guys, I've had to shift like my children are more important than sitting here and having wow. a drink. You know what um, I mean? Geez. But you don't understand. You like you have to understand what a struggle that has been for me mm -hmm. previously mm -hmm. in my life because external forces have always tugged at me harder than anything else because I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to mm -hmm. let down. If I'm asked to do something, if I'm asked to come somewhere, or can you help with this? I have a hard time saying no. Right. You know, it's yep. easier for me to say no to the people that are in my home because. Well, they're always going to be in my home and they're they're legally ob obligated to <laughs> love me unconditionally. You know, you know what I mean? I think it's a little different, but yeah. <laughs> but that's I'm saying yeah. that's the right. extreme yeah. that my oh, head I, goes I, to. I know I get it. You know, so it's it's being mindful of that, and making the shift that I can't do that anymore. Like I 
I have to find a, a different balance because if I say yes to you and I come home at the end of the night and I didn't put my kids to bed and I sit on the couch and I feel sad about it, mm. that's not worth it. It's not worth it. You know what I mean? There's a way I can I, I can find a balance. So to you know circle back to your question, it's nice. Jen Saki. Thank you. We got oh. your shirts, by the way. Oh, we do. Yeah, it's Saki it's, with it's such an irrelevant reference anymore, but, it's but so I love perfect. it. It's favorite. finding it's finding uh, things to cut in a healthy way, right? Mm. Would you say like priorities? Yeah, set priorities. The, yeah. yeah, but even then, that's what I there's hear you been, saying. There's been work stuff where this is hard for a lot of people. I think in today's modern world, like I'm in my 30s, and uh, I think a hard thing is. People are are kind of it's ingrained in them to hustle. It's ingrained to work. It's ingrained to earn more, make a better financial life for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I've had to really reflect on that. Is for me personally, I've had to ask the question: Is an abundance of finances or a continued growth of finances uh, worth missing certain things with my family? Right. And for me personally, I've decided I I don't want to be irresponsible, but I'm willing to make a little less money if it means I can spend a little more time with my kids, if I can spend a little more time with my wife, because kind of the revelation I've had is at the end of the day, I don't know that I'm going to enjoy that that extra bonus check or or those extra finances hitting the bank account more than I am. Uh, having my kid look at me as I'm putting them to bed going, you know, I, I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm so glad you're here and giving me a hug. You you keep talking, and I'm just going to find relevant quotes from this book that line up. Very Perfect. quick. Yeah, page that 70 of The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Homer. Do you ever catch yourself with a sneaking suspicion that you'll wake up on your deathbed <laughs> with this nagging sense that somehow in all the hurriness and busyness and frenetic activity, you miss the most important things. Mm. Mm. Nope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. We said My yes life and no. Awesome. We said yes and no I'm at the exact same time. In balance. <laughs> I'm awesome. I don't know what's wrong with the rest of you losers. That's what I heard you just say. Um, you know, there's another book that I've read for uh, it was a little while back now, but. Um, it's the B I B L E. <laughs> yes, that's the book for me. Please don't <laughs> ever do that again. <laughs> that was horrible. That was horrific. I, I, you know what? I'm going to put myself yeah. on a 15-minute mute. <laughs> yeah, you have lost your speaking privileges. The experience we just went through is so bad. <laughs> don't forget to so turn that horrific. back on if you actually muted yeah, yourself. That was, yeah, no, it definitely is muted. I can see the button. Uh, nope, that okay, was, there we go. Yeah. What, what are we here? Okay, we're good I now. think we're don't back to normal. Yeah. I don't know how to use this thing. It looks fine. Okay. The, <laughs> it looks fine. Um, you know, there's this uh, book that I read back a while ago and, and it was actually a pastor sitting in and, and he obviously in his role sits, uh, with a lot of people, uh, towards the end of their lives. And, uh, one of the things he was talking about is, you know, he was sitting actually with a former PepsiCo, uh, CEO oh, wow. and, um, was sitting with him at, on his deathbed in the hospital and, uh, surrounded by very few people is, you know, maybe a handful of people came in and he said he was the, the main person that was there the full time. And this is a man who everybody regarded as highly successful. Everybody respected this guy. Everybody, um, who knew him looked up to him because he had great work ethic, great intelligence, very successful. And what he related to is how many people that had not reached or achieved that level of human success but had deathbeds that were surrounded by people mm -hmm. and, and a family and a yep. life that was spent around people. Mm -hmm. And um, very, very different experience, obviously, is, is both those events. And I constantly think of that. It's like, what do I want that to look like, um, you know, towards the end of my life? Yep. Do I want to be surrounded by the people that I've loved on and, and spent time around? Or do I just want to be like, yep, your net worth is this, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, I think those are very two uh, two very different outcomes, but not even point. not even the end of life. How about just during during life? life. Yeah. yeah, very you true. You know, yep. uh, hold up in an office making lots of money, mm -hmm. or enjoying time with my kids and hearing about their day and getting to connect with them at night, or right. getting to I I had to skip something tonight because I wanted to go to a choir concert for my daughter. Now, yeah, seventh grade choir. 
that ain't no like you know <laughs> highfalutin sort of musical yeah. achievement mm-hmm. but to see her up there singing and then yep. to get a text message afterwards like thanks dad for coming way more important than side note your daughter has a cell phone it's probably mom it's just a home phone that she oh, carries no. around with her a little too much I've oh, got no. some other issues in my life. I need to ask questions because I'm getting there too. So mm, interesting. Aren't your kids like nine and ten? Yeah, they're they're at the age where like other Ooh. kids are getting them. That's too young. I agree. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, and you know my oldest one. He's yeah. He, no. <laughs> it's fine. We don't got to worry. Who's he gonna text? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, he's the best. <clears throat> um. So. From a from a life sort of perspective, I think many of us. I don't. I don't know. You know the demographics of everybody listening and watching. Yeah. This podcast, I know generally pretty well what they are, but we're all at different stages of life. But I think we can all kind of identify with that. Yeah. You know what? I think my priorities are out of balance, or I think I'm. Yeah. I'm chasing this carrot at the end of a you know rope that I'm never going to get there, sort of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> but what if we transition to a spiritual? side of things yeah because uh in this lovely book the ruthless elimination of hurry written by john mark homer his big question that he poses throughout and i I think this is maybe something you can speak to as well is like the question he asks is what is this fast pace of life doing to our souls Mm -hmm. and like that's a question i don't think nearly enough of us are asking yeah so so uh, the the conversations that I've had with you in in this kind of you know multi month revolution I've been I've I've been walking through is uh, going off of of Comer talking about what does it do for our souls. There's a second book that I I've read over this time, which is uh, which is the With book mm-hmm. that that we all did. We should do a whole episode on that. Yeah, um, who's the author of that book? Let's Sky Jathani. Sky Jathani. Anyway, that that paired with, I believe I read them both within like the same week <laughs> and talked to you on the. I have to change everything <laughs> yes. in my life right now. And, and talk to you on the phone where, if it's uh, when you when when you go back to spirituality, that entire book is about how spending time with God. In a nutshell, it's mm-hmm. it's being with God, mm-hmm. right? Uh, like. If you look at spirituality and you look at religion, you look at Christianity. A lot of it is 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 centered around li- living under the rules of God, living for God, living. But hardly do we ever stop to think about living with God, right. which is the most important part, yep. and that's having a relationship with Him, right? So that is hard to do in a hurried lifestyle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It really is. And if you want to sit back and think about what actually matters right like that's what i've been doing over the past few months any anytime something that comes up that's been proposed to me that's outside of the home or possibly even making money like you you could make a paycheck going and doing this i have to really reflect like is it going to benefit my life right substantially more than if i was to miss this or i was to miss time with God or I was, you know what I mean? So I think, I think those two books paired together have kind of rocked my world in a sense um, to where, what does a hurried lifestyle do for your soul? It distracts you. It distracts you, Mm -hmm. right? It distracts you. Mm -hmm. I I think that's ultimately the answer to your question. Um, Very long way of getting there. We talked about this a little bit in the last episode. Like, what does it look like to spend time with God or to or to be with Mm -hmm. God? Yeah, I think most people, Christian, non Christian for sure, but even Christian, I would say, are totally uncomfortable even attempting that. Yeah, because it takes a level of slowing down and maybe maybe discipline is the right word. Yeah. Mm to not pull out the phone right. to not scroll to not mm. look for an instant answer instant mm. gratification sort of thing to to sit and ponder yeah anything is a lost art in our culture today Maybe that's why we should have more hot buttered rums and just for sure sit around just and talk around well and talk. even but especially with god yeah you know to to ponder 
what is God like? What might he be trying to communicate to me? Right. What is his character like? What would he, what would I don't want to go to the whole like cliche WWJD, you know, sort of thing, but yeah. but honestly, but in a sense, real. like what would God do in this situation? How would he approach like we're we're constantly running from one thing to the next. We never even take the time to ask those questions. Right. So I don't know. I man, I gotta tell you. I we like in the midst of all of this, we went to a, a book retreat mm-hmm. recently where we we went over Jathani's with book. And on my way back from that book retreat, I think was maybe part of the peak of this whole journey that I've been on. And it was just a solid hour and a half drive of silence and just thinking about wow, like Nothing matters outside of the relationship I get to have with God and the gift of my wife and my children that he has given me. Like, there is literally nothing else on on this planet that I would trade for being able to spend time with God whenever I want to and then being able to walk through my front door and touch my wife and touch my kids and talk to them and look them in the eyes. And like I got home from that. And I was like, I don't ever want to leave any of you ever. I don't ever want to go forever. I don't ever want to go anywhere love ever me. again. You know what I mean? Like I get it. That, like I get that there's you were have they as on fire as you were because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <they're> like <laughs> what did happened you, to you? Did, yeah, you? did you just take a minute? <laughs> did you guys smoke crack at this retreat? Or <laughs> Dad, I can't <laughs> breathe. <laughs> uh, loosen now, up. Now I understand you can have inspirational moments and go through inspirational yeah, yeah. things, and then reality says, "Okay, well, you still have to pay your bills. You have an electric <laughs> bill, and you have a mortgage. You do have right? to go to work. Yeah, you do have to go to work." So I, I think for me, it's just been trying to transition out things that. Like it, it is kind of like a sacrifice. Like you have right. to think, mm-hmm. what am I willing to sacrifice to explore and appreciate more of this side of my life? Yeah, where maybe I didn't beforehand because I was following what I felt was society's way of saying this is how I have to do it. Mm-hmm. This is how everybody does it. <clears throat> Kevin and I had a conversation earlier this week, obviously offline from this, but um, talking about someone that that he knew that was um, very involved in a a church activity at the church that we go to. Yeah, but his business was doing really well. He owns his own business and it's growing, and you know clientele is going up. And he he basically came to the realization: Hey, if I want to keep making more money and keep building my business. I have to say no to something, right? Yeah. Something has to something has to give. And so he told Kevin, "Hey, I'm going to drop out of this Bible study thing mm. that I'm doing on Wednesday nights." Mm. And Kevin's response to him, they're good friends, and so, you know they yeah. kind of you know razz each other a little bit and he said, "Oh, you too." Right? And this idea of like not pointing a finger, but man, isn't that what we all yeah. do when life starts to get busy get hectic whatever sort of thing yeah why is the first thing to go for many of us spiritual things Mm -hmm. time with god time with other believers um church activity sorts of things and you can you can get maybe not the first two but you can certainly get out of balance with church activities too right so this is not this is not all saying that's fine but like why do we elevate working more as a holy, good, awesome yeah. thing? This is an honorable maybe, thing as to an do. an honorable thing when maybe it's not. Yeah. Now, maybe you're not working enough and you need to, but like over time and stressing yourself in 60 hours a week yeah. is not necessarily a good and honorable thing. You know, uh, having your kids in a hundred... <laughs> Chris was like, very cold uh, out with. This is not you at all. This is with somebody else. Okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> Having your kids in a hundred different sports every single season of the year, mm-hmm. there are incredible values that sports and team activities can teach our kids, right? right. It's not like those are r- inherently wrong in and of themselves. 
But if enrolling our kids in sports distracts from more important things we could do with our kids, maybe that busy lifestyle yeah. is getting in the way of, yeah. of, um, of our soul and our growth and our family. I heard a quote from somebody just today. Um, I, I forget who it was. I think it was Vadi Bacham or Bacham. I don't know how to say his name. But anyway, the it stuck with me because there's some alliteration in it, and that's... Mm. You know, that's you. That's my sort of thing. So if you teach your kid how to throw a ball, but not how to understand the Bible, parenting fail. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, oh gosh, that's uh, what's most important. What's yeah. the priority, right? Yep. And if we are go, go, go all the time, so much so that we don't have time to spend with the people who are most important to us. Yeah. So much so that we don't have time to sit with God, to ponder his ways. We don't have time to engage with other people who are, who are heading the same direction we want to go. Is that really a win? Yeah. I would think no. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just I'm, just, I'm just taking this in. <laughs> Do you want to take this copy home? and? I don't have time to read it. Great. That was perfect. Listen. Yeah, I'm a little too busy. I you know, can't read this. You know what I was going to say? Get it on audiobook and listen to it at double speed. Perfect. I need triple speed. I've been doing that lately. Is it good? It's awesome. Can you even understand but, a book on double speed? Well, I talk so slowly sometimes, though. I can't follow it. No, I do want to say this. Like 10 times speed. Yeah. If you are, those of, those of like you that are. Midwest speak, like the way we talk. <laughs> Those of you listening or watching this at double speed, oh yeah, That's, turn it to one x. Yeah, yeah, right That's now. That's ridiculous. We okay. all talk very quickly and very fast, and we have. Yeah, our I don't points. know how you'd understand us at double speed. <laughs> yeah. So, Dude, and we you, always have these little interjections. But that we have to slow throw in there. down. It's okay. Like I, yeah. I, I remember Kevin telling me the story one time of uh, a a person that was you know kind of high up on the the ladder of this particular career. Mm. And this guy had a podcast of his own and was saying he hired someone, I don't know, it was like a life coach or whatever, but to help him make more efficient trips around his home. Wow. Like, here's the quickest way, the most efficient way to get to your bathroom. Here's the fewest steps you can take to get to your office. And, like, <laughs> you see, <laughs> what's wrong with that? <laughs> Listen, if your life, I just say this, if your life is so busy that you have to efficiently get All to right. the bathroom, I think there might be some things out of balance. Can I just throw one other uh, twist okay. into this? What if your mentality is not just like staying busy, but what if you truly feel like you can have a greater impact if you structure and organize your day into providing the most uh, impact possible? By eliminating things like, I'm going to say. Scrolling if, TikTok. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. TikTok, Facebook, That's, like yeah. any of those things that. Yeah. Although I do hope whatever TikToks we make of this episode, I do hope people watch. Yeah, this is going to so. be really ironic for the people watching <laughs> these videos. As you guys but, said, yes. if anybody's on TikTok, <laughs> then they see. <laughs> I, um, we want to tell people to do something different with all the other TikToks they else, watch. Not this. But make sure and watch these ones. <laughs> So, um, yeah, go ahead. I, I just think that uh, at least, and I'll say this selfishly, and, and I'm learning a lot right here just listening to you guys too, but I, I think there's, no, I, I can't read this. I don't know how <laughs> to understand it. <laughs> I don't have time to read this. Look at how many pages this. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, um, at least for me personally, I feel like there's an impact beyond me that I can make uh, to the people around me. And, um, and some of it does require to be a lot more efficient and maybe sacrifice my own time and at times my own family um, and my time spent with them to be able to provide that impact. Um, and so that's where I'm str is I'm here like great stuff. Like I'm hearing this today and it's like, yeah, it all makes sense. Checks out. Yes, I understand it. Yes, I, I it makes yeah. sense to me. But at the same point, it's like, okay, but that I'm not making the impact that I want to the community that I want to have an impact to. And I'm not making an impact at the level, even within the business structure that I operate. 
uh, the business that I get a chance to because I see a real impact on a day to day basis there. To me, that's where it's it's a struggle. It's like I don't want to give that up. Um, that, that's where I think um, I don't think a formula is the right thing to say. Like in in your case, you know, I know we've we've talked like, hey, listen, uh, anything once my wife gets home from work until my kids go to bed is going to be really protected time, right? Yeah, it's that's, off limits. That's your kind of view, yeah. right? Uh, I don't think that's a formula that everybody has to follow. Right. No. Right? No. So it almost goes back not to Not at the, all. It's not like, well, this is the Johnny way, therefore this is the holy way of doing no, it. No, no, you no. have to spend yeah. from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. with your family uninterrupted yeah. and never do anything else. Right. That, that's not what you're that's saying. That's just for me mentally. That's how I know I can stay on track. Yeah. Right? That's how I know so I can start to... to sh- what? On track for me, paying more attention to the things that I personally feel matter more than anything else is this like an urgent versus important what do you mean sort of thing yeah like so that resonates with me so many things in life we do just because they're urgent yeah but we do those often at the sacrifice of what's most important yeah so you were doing i think if i hear you right you were doing a lot of urgent things specifically professionally yeah and i really know you know your story pretty well (laughs) yeah last minute urgent sorts of things that were at the sacrifice of things that you knew back then, even, were more important. Correct. Now you're just finally starting to align your schedule Yes. to make sure the important things don't get bypassed. Yeah, and the reason it wasn't aligned before is because I have a hard time saying no to people. Yeah. Mm. And now it's saying, you're going to have to find a different time. And so that's where I think, like... God, so I'm fine, so... Oh, so you got <laughs> good. So I'm totally good. Chris, Screw my Chris family. Like, They're not no, that important. No, no, no. I heard no, that. No. We're cool. Bye. <laughs> I'm good to go. What's I think I think I think everybody if you this takes time to slow For down sure. and be honest with yourselves. <laughs> but ask yourself, what's the most important thing to me? You know? Mm-hmm. If it's family, orient your schedule to have the important things covered. If it's making an impact in the community, then orient like it's not just going to happen because we pack our schedule. It's going to happen because we set dedicated times for those sorts of things. Right. You know, so that's where I think like every person can be different. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say though, if there is something that is getting in the way of us exploring who God is right. or spending yeah. time with Him or being around. Whatever direction we have a Christian bent, okay, but even I would say this is true of any religion, people who are heading the direction spiritually that you want to head, if you are not making time for that, are you going to like where you are Mm. five years from now, 10 years from now? Are you going to be at the place spiritually that you want to be, you know? Oh, man, this may be deeper than you want to get. Let's go. But... We're only at 58 minutes according to this time. I have no clue what it really is. So this may be deeper, but in kind of a line with that is my thoughts recently have been so, like, I don't want to sound like the crazy Christian, right? But it has very much been, I am going to spend time with God because, man, this life is short and it really doesn't matter. It Mm. really doesn't. What do you mean by that? I think I know what you mean. Yeah. But. I, what, I, what I mean is this is not it. Mm-hmm. Where we are right now, mm-hmm. us three sitting right here is not it. The ultimate goal is in t- eternal peace with Jesus Christ in heaven, mm-hmm. right? That's we are Christians. We are coming from a Christian perspective. And I think I have so hyper-focused on that recently that it's like I am going to enjoy the things that I like like while spending time with my children, spending time with my wife and simplifying my life and spending more time with God because the rat race of the world isn't it. If you never make six figures. If I never make six figures. So what? So what? I can't take it with me. If you never achieve some level of what fame or notoriety or your other podcasts if they never blow up to be number on the top 10 trending so what oh well 
And it's boy, it's I. I understand that's I'd not like everybody's to, cup I of want tea. To be there, like I get. <laughs> I'm not I, there often. I don't know that I'm there yeah. entirely. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's where I'd like to be. Mm-hmm. I think in this whole kind of revelation that I've been walking through is that's ultimately where I'd like to be mentally is where I can wake up unfazed because I'm secure in the relationship with my heavenly father and I spend time with my family and I make sure they have a house and a a, a meal to eat every single day and feel mm-hmm. loved and feel the unconditional love of God. And I, I like I... And the last thing I want to do is just sound like some mountain man, like crazy, like <laughs> I'm moving into the forest. Yeah, ex- exact, exactly. You're doing a great job of it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're hitting that nail on the head. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's not what, what I want to do. What are you going to do? Get rid of internet next? <laughs> <laughs> you psycho. It's hard, to, it's hard to describe what's been going through my head without kind of sounding insane, but I... <laughs> for, for that's real. That's a great sign. <laughs> But it's, I mean, I don't know. It's its a lot of priority setting. <laughs> yeah. Would you say, um, back to uh, the book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer, I feel You're like. You're not sponsored. If you want to be a sponsor, John Mark. Yeah. I'm going to save that for another time. That'll be off here. No, I'm going to say it right now. Do you know anybody who goes by all three of their names other than serial killers? I'm not saying he is. I'm just no, saying it seems a, very no, it's odd. actually a great question. You know. Yeah. Anyway, what's up, John? <laughs> John? Like, I just, hey, John Mark says, like, I don't call anybody. I don't even know your guys' middle names. John okay, Mark? So. I'm so happy you don't. Is That'd it John Mark? Weird. No, I'm saying I, oh, my name is John Michael, but we. <laughs> you got so excited that it was John. I did, like, <laughs> we, 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 had, we I had friends growing That's up. private information. Oops, I sorry. The internet didn't know. <laughs> I had friends growing up. All of their names were John. And their middle names are different. One of them was John Mark, oh. John Luke, John Michael, John Paul, John. That was they How were all named John. How many friends did you have? No, they were all. <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying they were all in the same family. Like that's what their parents. That's what their parents named them. I know you. How did you have this many friends? Ah, oh, boy. Moving on. Sorry, Moving I can't on. get through a podcast without it. He um he suggests again. This is not a sponsorship for this book. I just really think everybody should read this book. Including you, he suggests um, four. Feeling very cold. <laughs> oh, you caught that one. Good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is really why you loved this book, by the way. Because of what his For four me? his four S's. Oh, oh, God, it spoke to me, man. It was <laughs> awesome. So uh, he suggests four practices for unhurrying your life. Yeah. Silence and solitude. That's one. They both start with S, so I'll that's give true. them that. Yep. But they all do. Sabbath. Simplicity uh-huh. and slowing. Would you say, just being fresh on this journey, sort of thing, would you say one of those has been the most impactful for you? Um, I, I would, I would say two. The rest, I would say the the half fifty. Okay. The, the simplicity what? and sl- I don't know what that meant the either, simplicity and slowing. percent. Okay. Right now you get the half fifty. Yeah. Simplicity and slowing. I I would say is simplify your life. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, he talks about what I. This isn't the only thing, but one of his examples was like clothing mm-hmm. in there, right? Have a couple pairs of pants and a few t-shirts in your closet, and just simplify things. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I, what what would the what's the modern way of saying it is? So you got a bunch of new t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I went out and bought a bunch of new t-shirts. Yeah, exactly. All black though. <laughs> What do, what do people say? Yeah, Down- I'm slowly working towards that. <laughs> Not for that reason. Though. Down downsizing. Yeah, that's downsizing. that's kind of yeah. that's kind of what he's explaining when he's talking about simplifying. But it's not just about material things, yeah. right? But just think of anything that's complicated in your life and simplify it. There you go. Hmm. <laughs> and then and then slowing, slow things down. Which there's some things in there that might aggravate people if you read it for the very first time when he talks about slowing he talks about intentionally picking the longest line at the grocery store and keeping insane. your phone <laughs> this guy's nuts. and keeping and keeping your phone in your be, pocket yeah yeah pick the longest line and don't touch your phone and just i need to put ooh. this guy in touch with my dude he but, will help him make sure he knows what time to go to the bathroom and how quickly he can get there <laughs> the quickest way any through room the bathroom. in his house <laughs> 
But the whole concept behind it is not to waste time at the grocery store. It's to train yourself to I don't have to be rushing. Slow down. You don't yeah. have to be rushing everywhere you go. When like, you wait, did he do another one? When you wait in the doctor's office, don't pull out your phone. Don't pull out your phone. Why the other, you the other thing anywhere? he said, which which you probably love this one too. He said, drive the speed limit. Oh, screw that! Don't guy. drive under. Don't <laughs> drive you. over. I'm so happy we finally agree. If you <laughs> block out your schedule in 15 minute increments, you'll never have to wait in line anywhere. You'll be on time everywhere you go. But in 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 the last in the last part of his book, he goes through 20 rules that he calls to it's a lot of rules to okay. slow down your life. <laughs> Chris is just like I'm done. I'm having a panic. <laughs> it's and it's not necessarily rules. It's more of suggestions on how you can okay start to practice slowing down your life. And he he puts them all down as not something you should absolutely 100% do, but things you can start to do to get yourself, your mind, your body in the routine of, I can slow, like, it will be okay if I slow down. The world's not going to If I end. have to wait five extra minutes at the grocery store because a little 82-year-old lady has a bunch of coupons, where do I need to be? So much in the that I'm checkout aisle, no. so he can get home with his kids. <laughs> Where do I need to be? <laughs> so I can be with my kids. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> so much that Boom. I'm that that I'm going to allow something like that to upset me. I'm mm. gonna get agitated by it. I'm gonna get upset about it. Like it's all these practices to teach yourself to slow down, unless the person I'm, that you're getting aggravated at is in the school drop off line. Yes, because I. Knew this literally, <laughs> literally this morning, I'm sitting, we get to uh, my youngest daughter's school uh, just like, I don't know, two or three minutes earlier than we normally do. And if she goes in too early, she's got to go into some priest care program. Like mm -hmm. I ain't about to pay five bucks for that. Right. And so we just sit in the parking lot and we're watching cars in the, 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 the literal drop off lane. Okay. It's not the parking lot lane. Yep. It's the drop off lane. And this mom puts her car in park. Dumb. Strike one. Yep. Okay, I'm already gonna. He stab saw those you in brake lights and was like, <laughs> "I'm <laughs> done. Get out of my life." <laughs> Number two. Self check out a life lady. <laughs> <laughs> she gets out of her car. Oh, not only no. puts it in park, but gets There's out of her car. There's only one way that it's okay. I'm not gonna. Nah, I'll say it. No. If she has a handicap sticker, she didn't. Then. Then she screwed up. Go ahead. Then she proceeds to walk around her car to the other side to get her daughter out. And I kid you not, grab out her lunchbox, oh. put her coat on her daughter, oh. put her backpack on her daughter, stand there to talk to her oh, daughter, no. stand there to give a hug to her Linda. daughter. <laughs> Linda, <laughs> get back in the car! <laughs> and all the while, there are these other cars yeah, behind yeah, yeah, her yeah. just waiting. Losing their minds. I'm not even in the line. I'm parked in the yeah. parking lot like a responsible adult. <clears throat> and mm. I'm, I'm just getting so frustrated there. So, why? She probably should have just shot her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree. Uh, I fortunately have only had to do this like three times in my life, and it was when my wife uh, had had a baby, <laughs> so I had to drop the kids off at school. Um, what a nightmare! What a I nightmare. can't even imagine. It's <laughs> the hell worse. It is literal hell Literally, on earth. A zero okay. out of ten. Get on this. Our board. Get this. You got you both. Of you are gonna love this. I drive my daughter to school every single day, Ugh. and I park and I walk her up to the school. I don't go through the drop off line. That's totally fine. I park hey, and I lock not, her up. Not, if you, you want to know why, because, because the you drop probably get out. No, no, no. It's not the effing no. place to do that. Because, By the way, my because, school teachers get pissed about that. Because I don't like the hurry of the <laughs> drop off line. I like to get her this out. This guy sucks. <laughs> I'm telling you, on the way out this morning, I'm so stressed out. I started formulating a plan in my head of how I'm going to open my own school. Yeah. And half of the staff is going to be outside, and they're going to go up to people's cars and be like, you're not allowed to do this. This is the drop-off line. Go park. And if they can't park in between lines, they're not allowed to get out of their car until they back up and park right. <laughs> so uh, the school... I had a, it was literally a five-minute drive halfway yeah, into yeah. town no, listen. before I gave up on 
on the time well spent. I'm starting a school. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Time well spent. Uh, The school my kids go to. I love it because they have the teachers who will look them in the eye and be like, nope. Go, go, go. Don't you it's dare unbuckle, Susie don't, no, Soccer Mom. Even, don't even stop. Like, hold the brakes so they can jump out. Roll. Tuck and roll. <laughs> Tuck and roll, kid. <laughs> I, did oh. the, I did the drop-off line for the first week of school. It's my first time it's I ever terrible. experienced it. I, I wouldn't even say the first week. I did it for the first two days. I was like, <laughs> nope. Start we're we're going to park. I'll walk Again, you Again, back to what I was saying. If you leave at 530, it's not your responsibility. <laughs> That's. I'll, I'll make sure to let my wife so know the key, that. The key to everything is either slow down and simplify and make up. the most important things or just dip speed out. up so fast. <laughs> dip out of everything so Run early. Run your life till the wheels fall off. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. wow. I'm going to write a book. Hey, this is the train. Derailed. <laughs> it's very, gone very true. Completely. Speaking of train. Just uh, keep going as fast as you can. <laughs> Don't let anything stop you. Oh, uh, there's a mountain that hasn't been a tunnel cut boom. out? Who cares? Make right that, into the mountain. Make that tunnel. I do just want to reiterate yeah, this, please. okay? And this is this is not a you have to. I just think this would be a wise thing to do. I remember the the church that I go to, we talked about this, I don't know, a decade ago, right? And it, the book wasn't written. It was, it was just this whole like urgent yeah. versus important sort of thing, you know, building some margin into your life. And uh, I'll never forget one of the one of the families that was listening was a pretty key family in the church at the time, um, pretty heavily involved in a lot of different areas. And they heard this message. And uh, after the message, they came up to the pastor who told me this story then secondhand told me not in a gossip sort of way we work together okay so yeah. like just yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's clear that up yep said hey these these people decided uh yeah you know what i gotta get my priorities straight and so um we're gonna stop being involved in church <laughs> like <laughs> they only had so many different blocks of time i think they used like yeah, i think the illustration that day was like 24 different blocks right and you can choose where you want to yeah. spend them and the realization they came to was like, well, uh, I've got all these other things that are important, so I'm going to completely cut out the church thing from my life. So stop being involved, man. I we're, don't think that's the wise thing. That's well, all I'm saying. Like, we're not coming anymore. Oh, they stopped coming, too. Yeah, so like, it's, not, it's not only are they we not volunteering, we're stopped coming. Yep. Now, I could see that if you volunteer in seven different things at your church. Sure. And you are trying you're to five you are trying to adopt week. this lifestyle. Yep. And you want to cut down to two. Sure. I think that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but, but definitely don't completely cut, yeah. cut everything. Again, I think goes to priority. And I, yeah, we I I would assume we all agree a relationship with God and spending time with Him, being involved in His work in this world. Mm-hmm being around other people who are in the same direction spiritually, I think those ought to be some non-negotiables. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I think that has that has probably been more clear to me over the past few months than it has my entire life. Hmm. Yeah. What would you uh <clears throat> what would you tell? Say there was somebody here whose name, you know, rhymed with bliss. Bliss. I hate all of this. And uh you know, maybe he's in the middle of he or she being awesome all the time is in the middle of raising a young family and building a thriving career and is still pretty early off in life and uh, maybe doesn't want to admit it yet. <laughs> what would you say to somebody who's listening that is is maybe just trying to take all this in, you know, and pretty like, epic in life. Definitely <laughs> killing this it. Is- <laughs> Is definitely awesome. Okay, so okay, so from, further ahead than all the rest just, of you yeah, losers. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> definitely a good hang. Would definitely do well on a podcast about interest. Makes that he a has. killer hot buttered rum. Yeah. Okay, really likes clocks <laughs> and watches on my wrist. <laughs> and finance. miniature clocks attached to leather bands on my wrist. Uh, what would you say? This to, guy sounds awesome, by the way. <laughs> so if you're Looking from coming from a spiritual perspective, it's going to sound at least to you guys like the revolving door <laughs> of spend more time with God, mm-hmm. <laughs> just like spend time with God. Mm-hmm. Like, I to anybody who's 
trying to look at things from a spiritual perspective, it's it may sound annoying, but that's almost going to be the answer to everything right. is spend more time with God. Mm-hmm. Like he'll change your heart mm-hmm. and and you'll figure out what to do from that. Uh so that's what I'd say, number one. Um man, if I for everything else, I I don't know, bliss. What do you <laughs> Mr. Bliss, I, I, I'm I not sure as far as I know what's working for me. Mm. I'm not going to say it's going to work for. And I know it's working every, for me. For so everybody thank else. You very much. Yeah, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> I just know. Uh. Again, and, and I've already talked about this. It's like I just I just know in my mind what I want to put more time and emphasis on. Because at the end of the day, I've come to the realization that I'm going to be happier with that end result than in, over anything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if that's the same. Like, I, I don't know that I can sit here and say that that would be the same for everybody. The end goal I don't, is definitely not going to be the same. You know, we're all different. But mm-hmm. I, I would say this. Rather than letting life happen, plan how you want your life to yeah. happen. I can you know? agree with that. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> that I can get behind. <laughs> Plan what it likes. Take some time to reflect and think. 15 and minute increments. Slow. Take two 15 minute increments and put them together. Yeah. And reflect and think about and be honest with yourself. Where do I want to be a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now in some key areas? <clears throat> I would suggest spiritually being the most important, but relationally financially you know pick some areas and then decide those are the most important and then orient your life around that love it i hold true to the faith family finance uh priority list is that your other podcast it should be Mm. no that's god guns and guitars guitars that's right Mm. i can't imagine a podcast called faith family finance doesn't exist somewhere in the world it should it should if not i gotta figure out how to upload my podcast (laughs) Plenty of episodes. I just don't know what to do with thousands them. of them uh, recorded in my brain. Uh, this has been a very enlightening podcast for me. I will yeah. say. Hey, um, tell me about the book. Yeah, <laughs> the book it is really, called it really is the a good Ruthless book. John Mark everybody. Comer. Hmm. John Mark Comer. He's what got name. three names, so you know this one's brilliant. like highlighted everywhere. He goes. <laughs> not that he has three names. He goes by three he names. He goes by that's three the, names. That's, that's the, the concerning part. Yeah. yeah. But it uh, really is a great book. Uh, I would also highlight the other book that you mentioned, yeah, with, with, by Sky Jathani. Is Man. this double spaced? It if you be. are, See, it's a quick read. <laughs> you can listen to the ruthless elimination of hurry way <laughs> on two X audio book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to listen to a book about slowing down on two X <laughs> while doing four tasks. <laughs> Multitasking. I'll like, be running on the treadmill. Say, it's like <laughs> drinking espresso before going to yoga. Wait. Or meditation. You or to yoga? <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying. No, yeah. I don't. I would say to anybody that is a current Christian thinking about on the edge, or maybe you just don't even care at all, that with by Sky Jathani, life Altering. You know what's amazing? It's- I would say if you're not a Christian, that's a great book to read to get an oh, accurate picture yes. of what Christianity Start is. with that. The yeah. book and has if been you, on my uh, driver's seat or uh, passenger seat for about a month now. You should read it. I know. I know. I, I keep like opening it up and like, it's distracted by book. something else. It's my own fault, but it's it's on the list. <laughs> it's a great book. In fact, I've, I've said this before. I would recommend for uh, the first... The next five years, you only need to read two things, the New Testament and with. And that book. Yep. Those yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. That'd be enough. O- only read those, especially if you're a new Christian. Like, don't listen to anybody else. <laughs> don't, don't. Don't go get, don't, don't well, go listen to people. Now, okay. I, with, except this podcast. Yeah. Within, re- <laughs> come on, within reason. Great point. <laughs> But <laughs> read those two you, things you, you, and listen to drinking and thinking. <laughs> you're absolutely good right, advice. though. The New Testament and that with book. But if you also feel like maybe, I don't know, maybe there's people in the same boat that I've been in over the past couple of months where they're just kind of constantly thinking, man, is this really like 
what I should be doing. Yeah. I don't if you feel like things are just a little too hectic in your life, a little too busy, like this Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by Comer is it is I a feel, solid book. I'm gonna totally change the subject right now, but I I don't know how I'm gonna keep myself from laughing <laughs> unless I What happened? What are you doing? Saw, like we're getting ready to wrap up, right? We're yeah. we're kinda closing down and I just keep thinking about what you said. Like the the beverages we had today had one tablespoon <laughs> of, of this, and I just saw it up there, and it reminded why did I make a literal gallon? <laughs> I think your response earlier was like, "I'm gonna definitely use this." Oh I don't man, know why it hit me all of a sudden with like it's my cereal bowl tomorrow? I think it's because I'm like. Okay, we're wrapping up this episode. I'm going to have to clean up here now at night and like, it's a great. what am I going to do with 87 eat ounces it. of hot buttered rum batter? <laughs> Bring it home and eat it. <laughs> anyway. Okay, batter. before you close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I, 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 I know we're probably wrapping up. I we can are. see the time there. I'm like, <laughs> my goodness. It's, it's, a, long, it's a record I'm long episode, episode here. This Definitely is a not, record. unfortunately. Yeah. So I... <laughs> I know because I've Dude, spent is, some money. This is, we're still... <laughs> We're still on the low end of Bowski Bros here. For, for Come anybody on, buddy, who okay. stuck around to this, but no, can't make that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you stuck around this long, Chris will personally send you a tub of hot buttered rum batter. It's going to be in like a Tupperware container it's, just yeah. like this. It might be scotch taped together, but. <laughs> but he's going to send it. Uh, I don't know if that's so, true. So okay. what, I, what I would just say to people watching and listening before you wrap up is maybe you're not in the mindset of eliminating hurry from your life. But if you are, if it's something you're on the fence with, I just want to encourage you. It is okay to slow down your life because I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest things for me was there's a societal norm that people are following and will continue to follow. And the classic rat race. Like, I don't want to put a, a, a negative connotation around it because there's something noble and grand and great to being a being, you know, being a hard worker, making a strong living for your family and and setting high aspirations and goals for mm -hmm. yourself, right? But on the flip side of that, there you are not a bad person if you don't want to be a part of that. If mm -hmm. you want to slow things down, you want to look inwards a little more, you want to reprioritize your life. It is absolutely fine. Just put God at the center of it, mm -hmm. and everything else will fall into place. Don't let anybody shame you for if you work 10 less hours a week, 20 yeah. less hours a week. If you got to put your kids to bed every single night and that fulfilled you more than those 20 hours would have, you know, yep. you're good to go. Yeah, It's okay. There you go. Okay, well, hey, uh, we appreciate that you chose to stick around this long. If you haven't done so already, be sure and follow us at Let's Drink Think. We're going to try to not go an hour and 20 minutes on every single episode. <laughs> He's just flipping through. Chris is speed reading the book on eliminating hurry. <laughs> 2X. So, 2X. He's this is like 2X reading in person, uh, real life. I'm almost done. <laughs> I get the point. Uh, will you take these books if, if people want to yeah, check them we'll, out? Yeah, we'll put this in the description if you guys want to pick one up. And Jathani's will put both of those books. Highly, highly recommend that you read both of them. This is like triple line. But anyway, go ahead. You're, you're triple done. spaced. Uh, they're easy reads. At mm -hmm. least for me, life altering. Yep. And uh, we, uh, we're just so glad that you stuck around this long. If you have questions about anything that we talked about today or maybe you want us to talk more in detail about something, uh, you can either leave a comment uh, on the YouTube video or you can email us at hello at letsdrinkandthink.com. And uh, I I think I'd say we'd be happy to revisit this subject this season. Um, so anyway, uh, go make a hot butter rum. It's an above sure average did. drink for us, and it's a good reason to get a sugar high. And uh, we'll catch you on next week's episode. Peace. Yep. Yeah.